the meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing. Although, I think it's safe to say that it's not going to be reservation only this Saturday night for UFC 177. I don't like criticizing cards before they happen. It's like analyzing a sports trade right away. You've got to wait and see how the players perform on the teams that they were traded to. And I don't like criticizing cards before they actually go down because I don't want to be disrespectful to the fighters that are on the card. Uh, but as far as pay-per-view type of stuff is concerned, ugh, I don't know, especially coming off of UFC Fight Night 48 and 49 that were both uh, either on Fight Pass or on free TV. Joey Odessa returns to the program after a couple of week hiatus. Joey's been with us on Sirius XM MMA Meltdown Radio, but uh, he's been absent as far as the TV show is concerned the last couple of programs. So uh, we bring Joey Odessa back, take a little... Uh, a little, uh, we'll hit the uh, rewind buttons, and, uh, break down what happened over the weekend, and also uh, take a look at UFC 177. And I'm really interested in Joey Odessa's take on Dana White firing the judge on the spot. After the first two fights in Macau, Dana White didn't like uh, judging uh, from Howard Hughes. Yeah, I know, Howard Hughes. But uh, so Howard Hughes and Dana White literally and figuratively told him, you know what, go get some beers, get some popcorn and uh, watch the fights because he sure as hell can't judge these fights. There's no governing body uh, in Macau. So it's within the UFC's right to do so. Now, some people in the media were, oh, it's a conflict of interest, and they cried. There's a million and one conflict of interest in the UFC that nobody cries about. So I don't have a problem with this. I would rather, personally, Dana White actually fire a bad judge on the spot than have this judge ruin you know, all these fighters' hard work. You know, and when you hear about a bad judging decision, it's like, oh, well, whatever, that stuff's gonna happen. Well, whatever. It sucks for the fighter that's making $8,000, hoping to get a win bonus, and get screwed over by an incompetent judge. So I'm on the side of Dana White here, and the UFC has apologized and said that won't happen again. I don't really know if they should be apologizing uh, about this. And I don't really think there is a conflict of interest. Uh, seriously, Dana White doesn't care who wins the first night of a Macau uh, fight pass card. He just wants, uh, you know, he wants legitimate judging to be going down. Let's bring in uh, Joey Odessa. I'm all fired up about this now, Joey. It's always a pleasure. Great to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. I tell you, it's rare that you and Dana are on the same side. I'm usually, I, I, I usually agree with Dana because I'm in the minority. Everybody loves to hate on him. But I tell you what, you know, get the whip out and, and, and get these guys in gear because it is becoming, you know, look, everybody, nobody sees the same fight the same. But this how it's used and straight up, I don't think they owed anybody apology. I think they, they used owed the band and those fighters an apology. I mean, 30-27 was just, I thought, was inexcusable. And you know what? Maybe you should have took a popcorn and a beer break. Now, maybe it wasn't, you know, proper protocol or whatever, but things happened. Now they, I guess they set a precedent for it, and people are going to be on notice. And it, there is a way that can help solve this. And, and as you know, I don't want to run down the whole, you know, the entire program, but I believe that they should have mandatory seminars at least two times a year where these judges have to go and they see examples or videos, you know, like USA Wrestling used to do, and let's have a gold, silver, bronze certification where you can get downgraded and let your be, be judged by your peers. You know, private judge, you know, let these guys, you know, if you're not a gold gold level judge or a gold level referee, I mean, let's face it, I don't think John McCarthy had his best night, and I think he's a great referee. I thought he was a little, you know, the time, the travel, things like that do take, a, take their effect on people. And look, everybody's entitled to a bad night. However, you know, you're not entitled to leave, you know, if you leave your, your laptop at the office when you're going to give a presentation, or you leave your eyes or your glasses at the door when you check in the judge or fight, you don't belong there. And I think that the guy got him wrong. 30-27 was inexcusable. I would have gave him a bathroom break, too, for the entire event. And, and that's that. I don't think Dana owed anybody an apology. I think that, if anything, it strengthened his position. Now, you know, political correctness and, you know, what they should do and what they shouldn't do, I'm not in charge of the UFC. I'm not in charge of a gigantic, you know, organization like that. But I tell you what, you know, get your ass in gear and let's do it right. Because, you know, besides the referee, you know, being the most important person in, inside the octagon, those judges, they, they make and break careers. Well, that's I the mean, thing. You people, know, yeah, people, side, bitch. has a hard on for one of these fighters, you know, and doesn't like them. And the judge goes the opposite way. 
You know what I mean? I mean, it gives it gives grounds for to cut them, and then the person's out of employment. I mean, it ruins on so many different levels. So all these guys that are out there writing articles for I don't know what they get paid a page to take a you know to take an opposite side or to get headlines about the UFC and Dana being wrong. You know what? Think about all the money that these people lost. You know, and sponsors and things like that. And then go another aspect. We always talk about gambling. You know, I'm not going to go back and I'm not going to check out the Hughes fights. You know, uh, how he was that is. I'm not going to check out his fights, and I'm not going to say, you know, what he judged wrong and what he judged right, because who am I to judge a judge? I'm not a judge. I just see what I see. But, you know, a lot of times there's patterns to these things. And it, and the patterns, you know, there's always, a, you know, if there is corruption there, which I'm not saying there is, you know, some people are just meant for it, some people aren't meant for it. There's fighters and there's non-fighters. You know, I'll go to my friend Phil Baroni. You, didn't see, you know, you don't see Phil turtling up the tap, and he goes out on the shield. You see some guys over there that just turtle right up. You know, I mean, Kung Lee, you know, that that was a fight that, you know, he took a ton of abuse in. I got to give him some props, but I think that, you know, he was just just a matter of time. He was, you know, I, how could you not want the ref to stop that fight? Well, if you're going mean, to go, go down, if you're going to go down, you know, you go down on your sword like, uh, like Kung Lee did, you know, Michael Bisping gets it done. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned McCarthy. Was it a quick stoppage with Benson Henderson? Benson Henderson says so. I had I had a parlay with Benson Henderson and a pretty big parlay uh, with Jordan Mean and Benson Henderson. So I obviously didn't want the result that happened. But you know McCarthy's had a pretty quick trigger finger, you know, for the last year or two for one reason or another. I, you know, he's, he's fighter safety first. He's not Rosenthal where he's going to stand there and let a guy get killed to give him a chance to come back. And even as someone with money on Henderson, Henderson was out, Joey. You know he was out. Well, I got, I, you know I like. No Ten seconds well, later, you can argue up. and say I'm okay, but when you're, you know, when your eyes are spinning around and you're on all fours, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, so I don't really have a problem. Was it quick? Yeah, but you know, I think Big John was right ultimately. No, I'm not. I, that's not. My, that wasn't my my court. My my my. I didn't like to stand up in in, in the early fight. I think uh, I think it was the women's fight. They stood him up too quick. Uh, there was like five, ten seconds left in the round. It was a fight in the beginning that set. The tone for the card where it looked like John just, you know, I don't know if it was the crowd, what it was. It was somebody was landing some some kicks to the thigh, and uh, he just stood him up. And I just thought it was a inappropriate stand up. But again, what might have touched Big John? But you know, everybody's entitled to a bad night. He's arguably the top two referees inside the you know MMA world, and he's the first. And I got such respect for him. But uh, you know, like I said, it could have been a travel, could have been a judge, you know, the judges travel. Who knows? I mean, so many different things factor, and everybody's entitled to a bad night. But when you're having a bad night, call and check. You shouldn't have, uh, you should have took the, the night off. I think that was right. Well, speaking of uh, taking the night off, I should have taken the night off because I did pretty well with the Macau card. We broke it down on the podcast on Friday night on Sports Ray, Joey. We did very well with the Macau card. I think you did better than I did uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I got caught speeding with Benson Henderson. I just didn't see that coming. And normally Anthony Pettis was his only kryptonite. His only losses, you know, in the, the WEC and the UFC were to, to Anthony Pettis. So, you know, to lose to Los Angeles in a fashion that he did really caught me off guard, uh, Joey. And I've got to stop betting on totals because I thought that fight was going over four and a half for sure. <laughs> that, that caught me off guard. Just I think it caught Benson Henderson off guard as well. He says that he's not deterred. His confidence isn't shaken. But, man, like, you know, he's, he's fallen down the ladder a couple of, uh, couple of stops now, uh, Joey. Tough loss for Benson Henderson. Yeah, I didn't see it coming. I was definitely a part of late buster. There was a lot of guys walking to the bridge. I tell you, the number just kept going up and up because people were chasing. Um, I tell you, Tyrone Woodley looked amazing. I mean, he just, he's an animal. And, and I could read that to, you know, we always talk about success, you know, you know, being around positive people and successful people. And Olympians brings the best out in it. And Tyrone Woodley coming out of Missouri, we got our, our friend Michael Chandler. These guys, I mean, when you surround yourself with those kind of people, you get better, whether it's physically, mentally. I mean, it can happen. And, and that's why we see these, these, you know, a lot of these camps have a lot of success because, you know, winning is contagious. And yeah, so is losing. He's definitely starting to get his act together. So is losing, Joey. It's a bad night. And I, I was on both the fighters. And I should have known better than to lay it down on Francis Carmont in this spot. You look at Dallas Ladies. He's been on quite a roll. 
as of late. Carmelo doesn't really do anything great, but he's been good at grinding out wins. But in the post-GSP era, you know, I don't think he's won yet, actually, since George St. Pierre left. Uh, the Dominican nightmare, Alex Garcia, was a, a fighter with a ton of hype around him, uh, fighting out of TriStar as well, Joey. We always talk about this. People think gyms are great and they can't lose, and they're not really doing anything different than anywhere and anybody else, are they? It's sort of just, it goes in, in cycles, and some gyms just can't lose for a while, and then every, you know, some gyms just can't win, but rough night for TriStar in Montreal, Joey, with Garcia and Carmel going down. Well, you know what happens is you get a lot of these guys here put on the same card, you know, you get a, a, a card that's got a lot of guys like the alpha male guys on it, so they get in their heads that, you know, three guys go out there, they're big favorites, two, three, four to one favorites, they get the win, they look dynamic, you know what I mean, they, they look awesome, so it appears, you know, that's the last memory in your head, you know, you're only as good as your last fight, win or lose, I mean, you can come back and have, you know, you come you come back and you beat a great, you know, you're only one fight away from, from greatness again in the UFC. And, it, you know, it showed up here, I mean, in, in the last card. I mean, you're, you're talking about, God, you know, the, the main events and stuff like that. I mean, Bisping, you know, he tore Kong Lee up. I mean, that's going to be fresh in everybody's head. He put Bisping in there with somebody. I mean, Kong Lee did hurt him a little bit in the second round. You don't know what's going to happen in Bisping's next fight if he's in there with a heavy puncher. Well, Bisping needed, uh, Bisping needed a win. And, you know, it's hard to believe, 15th career win in the division for Michaels Bisping the most ever in a division without fighting for a championship. And it seems in a day and age where guys get two fight win streaks and they, they get championship shots, Bisping, it's eluded him, I guess, because he just, he never gets that win streak going. And it's like, almost if he wins his next fight, they'll throw him that championship uh, boat, an impressive win. Now, what was impressive is Joey Odessa was on TJ Dillashaw in the first fight against Renan Burrell. Uh, I was not, and uh, we'll see what Joey has to say. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll take a look at uh, UFC 177, MMA Meltdown continues.